This episode of Ticket Volume is brought to you by us, Invigate. Get service operations under control in no time. Get one free month of our software solution by going to try.invigate.com. Ticket Volume brings you a co founder and chief growth officer for Happy Signals, whose career started in positions at a SaaS company in 1998 and eventually moved into project, portfolio, strategy, and leadership positions at service design and IT consulting firms like Krasman, Tieto, and as well as a stint at Tibco. Welcome to Ticket Volume News and Information for Improving IT Experiences. I am your host, Matt Barron, and I chat with different leaders to share insights on service management, technology, and business. And this episode is no exception. But before we begin, don't forget, subscribing, liking, and commenting will get us algorithmic advantages, so please do that at your earliest convenience. Now, let's begin. Welcome to Ticket Volume, Pasi Nakanen. Hey, nice to be here, Matt. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to join me uh, this afternoon, this morning for me. Um, and we recently had a quick run in at Service Manager World in November. And I, I didn't realize it at the time, but someone asked me what I thought about surveys during my presentation. <laughs> and I think that my exact words, uh, regretfully, were that I hate surveys. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I was you... actually listening to your presentation and, and I was like, hmm. But you know what the funny thing was? Oh. I also had surveys. So I guess that's the whole point, like why we actually started the survey company. Okay, so good. It's a little bit more than surveys, of course, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Yeah. So let's talk about Happy Signals. Like, why did you start? Um, was it you and Sammy at the beginning? Let's talk a little bit about it. Yeah, we are three co-founders. Uh, there's two Sammys. So you know, for me, it was easy. I just have you know, I say Sammy, and something always happens. Is it the tech or is it sales, and, and okay. so on. But yeah, I think it kind of started from from our background. So uh, the, the other summits they were really heavily working on on service design, so design thinking and this kind of stuff on the on the consumer world. But if, and if... and um, there were some things that we realized that the big enterprises, when they come to running internal services, are not really doing. And I think the kind of the human experience is if, is really if... the key thing here. So we always talk about people, process, technology, but we kind of say that. You should do it in that order. So we are really heavily on the people box. We want to okay. understand how people experience things because I think only people can experience things. You know, machines and processes, they don't really experience anything. So, yeah. So, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, we kind of brought this idea that, okay, when you do things externally, we all know customer experience. You, you have usually two metrics. You have the heart. So how people like your service, but then you also have dollars. So how much are they buying from you? And this was something that we didn't really feel that, hey, this doesn't really fit into internal services because your company's employees, they are forced to use your services. Mm -hmm. They don't really have a choice. Of course, there's shadow IT and all this other stuff that can happen. So we think like, how do we bring this and And kind of the thing that we brought in, we just wanted to keep things simple. So we created alignment with, with two very simple metrics. And of course, the heart is still very valid. How happy people are with the services, how do they experience it? But then the next thing was that, how much time are you wasting? So we uh -huh. thought that the productivity aspect is really the, the key to, to have combined with the happiness because the point isn't to put you know, too much effort, too much resources of just trying to make everybody always give 10 on your NBS score, but to actually make improvements where it really matters the most. And if you ask from employees, where do you waste most of the time? You know, that's, I think, key for us to understand. Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, a company rooted in philosophical truth. Um, that That is fascinating. I love the way that Happy Signals came to be, that they were in service design and realized that um, understanding people, understanding hearts and, and dollars yeah. um, is kind of where, we, where you started. And... Um, I love what you said there specifically about capturing the reality of the matter. Like yeah. if, if our NPS or our employee effort score goes down, that's, it's okay. Right. Yeah, Be exactly. Like it happens. Their, their productivity is hurting. They're not as happy. That's just the reality, the measurement of the thing. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and 
one of the things we always say is that humans are the best sensors because they are really like they are always on when they are working. Uh, they understand the the situation that they are working. So if, let's say that you know you have you have a financial person uh-huh. working with financial tools or or your applications. They don't really care in the middle of the month how fast are you solving the ticket. So is anything working? But you know when the month changes. And it's like, you know, if I lose a minute, it's it's important for me. So they also understand that, hey, you know, if if you change something, I know still how to use it. And and you don't need to configure your your end users to make sure that you you capture their perception. They always have their perception and they always have their experience. Oh and I think gosh. if we if we tie it back to the survey thing, so we have something we call the ITX and the Happy Signals ITX and framework, which is IT experience management. And we call that it's measure, share, identify, and improve. You need to measure. And unfortunately, at this stage, you still, to get a human you know, opinion, you kind of need to have a survey. Mm-hmm. But I think what you always said that many times surveys are quite selfish. So you need to ask at the right time in the right way and you know, not ask again things that you know, like where are you working and what's your laptop and don't, you know, just, just ask how was the experience and how much time did you waste? So we do those things and then it's really important to start sharing because I think the measuring is easy. I mean, anybody can put a survey and put it out there, but what do you then do with it? So are you actually sharing, making sure that everybody sees what the experience is? Are you surfacing it to all your IT people so that everybody understands? And it's more like then we can agree, we can have a conversation, agree that, okay, this is where we should focus because IT is super complex nowadays. I mean, what are the fights that you really need to fight? I mean, if you can have a metric that, hey, here's where people are losing productivity, let's focus on that. And I think that little bit takes us to the to the identifying part and, and kind of getting back to these two metrics. Another thing that we do, uh, because we always kind of test this idea that with, with the boat summits that we want to change something, you know, we want to change what IT is focusing on. Mm-hmm. And because of that, we also gather all this data and we publish something called the Global IT Benchmark Report. And one of the cool findings in the last report was that 13% of your tickets actually sum up to 80% of the lost productivity. So now you kind of start to think that, okay, nowadays we we might have less employees. How do we make those employees more productive that they can still do the same work when you have had to let people go or whatever has happened in the in the organization. And maybe also consider what are the things that we can just automate and where do we put people to actually work on the difficult stuff. So, you know, without understanding the productivity part, if you just have a CSAT or you just have some vanity metric that, hey, we are doing great, then that's a selfish survey and you're not really using it to, to you know, better the the services better the the working uh, productivity of of the employees so that's really kind of our our angle to this whole thing and it's uh you also know Roy Atkinson and and, oh, yeah. and when we met the first time in London we had you know our booth was like happiness plus productivity is kind of the the thing that matters and he he just can yeah that's it so yeah <laughs> yeah Roy knows yeah and clearly you know too because that was a great <laughs> example you know your financial, the people you're per, you're supporting in the financial part of your organization. My band is crazy, and yeah. that it, you're right. Their context shifts from time mm-hmm. to time, and if you don't send the survey at the right time, you might not get the right context unless you understand the business. And like when I was an agent, that's something that we had to kind of figure out on our own. There wasn't yeah. anyone making those connections, yeah. but eventually you do. You make the connections, and then you start to trust these beautiful sensors that are telling you, hey, listen, this is all about something completely different that you don't understand. It's it's yeah. either it's my life or my productivity or my profession. Exactly. And and we as agents and as IT service providers need to adapt to that and understand yeah. that better. I also really like um, the ITXM call out um, experience management. You know, it's something that I think we've just been kind of approaching really slowly yeah. um, with XLAs and, and just getting away from vanity metrics, yeah. and getting towards experience management. I'm going to be, I'm very excited to see 
how far experience management makes it in 2023 because I feel like more and more people are starting to pay attention. More and more people are starting to to practice the discipline. Exactly. Thereof. Exactly. And in, in that, there's also this kind of, I mean, there's a maturity that we always talk with our, our you know, customers that, you know, you start from somewhere. And I think one of the key things is to, is to make the measurement part continuous. So that you don't do like a one-time survey and then uh, you're happy with that, like a yearly survey. I remember when I was working for Tieto, my last position was doing internal services for 15,000 knowledge workers. And we got a yearly survey. So then you said, okay, now people feel like this. Well, it took a year to make anything change. And then you missed the next uh, next yearly survey. So after two years, you maybe understood that did anything happen. And where we now know that there are things that can happen in the world, like pandemics, wars, things like that, that can actually make your, you know, two month old survey like meaningless. Like, you know, 2020, you know, you made a survey in January, it was outdated in March. You, there was nothing you did with that. You didn't Man. understand how people work in the remote environments and, and so on. So I think this kind of having continuous stream, so also meaning that. You don't have to ask all your thousands of employees every day. You just ask from few each day. So then you get this continuous stream and you see what changes. And also people's just perception and the, the experience changes. Even if you don't touch the service, you know, they get influences from consumer world and, and you know, how they expect things to work. Uh -huh. so, and this is also something we see in the global uh benchmark report is that like a Western European people are quite demanding because, you know, well, we, I come from Finland. It's the, it's the happiest country in the world. I don't think anybody told the Finns that, but, but, uh, it's, it's still, you know, we, we have 5G and we have anything and, you know, you have all these things that we are used to. So we are pretty critical when it comes to these things. And when you maybe go to some other countries where there's actual, you know, things life-threatening things yeah. outside of your work, yep. then you're super happy at work just on a, on a very basic things. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, something that you can also find in the report. Yeah, yeah that's such a good point. I love that. <laughs> you, the expectations shift based on what region you're in, what infrastructure is there. Yeah, uh, I can see on your video when we're recording that Finland has great internet because I'm getting a full 1080p resolution <laughs> yeah, video exactly. from you. Um, and there's no lag whatsoever. So yeah. I know that there's there's high expectations in, in exactly. Finland. Exactly. Um, and yeah. Sweden, I think, is kind of in the same same boat where they just have crazy fast internet. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, I spent some time in Buenos Aires uh, earlier this year. And, you know, not everywhere has air conditioning. And True. it's 100 Fahrenheit or 34 Celsius. And yeah. it's so hot yeah. that, yeah, going into work, Look, when I visited the air conditioning, that was great. So I was totally happy to be there and they have free food and free snacks and all my friends and colleagues are there. So yep. my happiness score kept going up <laughs> and up. Now that's just because exactly. I was visiting a different region, but uh, you kind of get the point. And I really yeah. like in your reports, so you've mentioned two now, the ITSM yeah. um, benchmark and yep. then the global IT experience benchmark. Those yep. are two different ones. Yep. I really like in your research how you say specifically, don't use this as your first baseline. If you're just getting into experience yeah. management, don't don't just assume that you can get to these levels. These exactly. companies have been focused on this for years um, and are working on it and doing things like continual measurement and continual uh, improvement. Um, what else is it? So is anything coming so, out? Do you have more research coming out? When yeah, did these come out? Yeah, and then there's, there's also these interesting things that we are now bringing into this because I also agree with you there was something you said that there's certain things that you don't have to survey so when you already get this this stream of data for example we one of the customers started to look at I, w I need to understand how when new people come to work and when they work for a while and how does that experience change so of course then you think okay let's make a survey to ask how was your onboarding or how was this but actually we already have the starting date and mm -hmm. we have the experiences because if you would ask from somebody that just joined the company, I'm sure that they, they give nines and tens because they are excited. It's a new place. I'm not going to say that, you know, something is, is not working mm -hmm. properly. But then when you start to look at, okay, how does the experience change during their, their time 
at the at the work. It's not something extra that you need to survey. You just use already existing data to to add it in there, a different perspective. And I think that's also a key thing is that um, experience is very multidimensional. It's you know when you get the operational data from whatever like a, from service now, you understand the different business units, you understand the locations, and you can always uh, explain it from if you are a service owner of certain service, you can look at it how are people are ex- behaving on my service. Yeah. If you're responsible of a geographical location, you just select that as a, as the way to look what what kind of lens do you want to look at the experience from. It's not just some one generic number, but you really need to understand where is it good and where is it not good. Yeah. So, so yeah. But yeah, then what is what else is coming out? So there's also in the end of February, there's a new version of the global IT experience benchmark coming out. Um, there's probably some interesting finding as well on that. Uh, Sakari Kyra, our, our uh, clever guy at our company, is, is digging into the data and always finding like this 13%, 80% of of uh, productivity data, for example. And then there's also kind of new versions coming from the from the framework, the IDX framework. And that's really something where we want to bring it into practice. So there's a lot of practitioners in IT, but then there's also, also all this high-flying thought leadership thing. But then what do I actually do? I, I go to a, like a, I go to Orlando in the, in the HDI event, I get inspired. Yeah. Then next week I'm at the office, so what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> so that's really what we then try to put on that is we are gathering because we started this journey already 2014. So we have, yeah, it's nine years. So <laughs> so we have nine years worth of our customers, really those champions is like best practices. What have they done? And that's what we are now documenting on that one. So try to give these things that, hey, do this, then do that. Uh-huh. It's kind of like going to the gym. Now it's January, right? Everybody has their gym membership and their new new sneakers and new clothes. But then you come to the gym like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Uh-huh. So it's kind of kind of giving you that guidance, hey, Start from here, then there's a progression to things. Don't try to make it too complicated first. Just start from here and get to that. And that's really what is coming now. Uh, I would say that now uh, during during the spring, we are bringing out those those uh, next versions of the framework as well. Okay, excellent. Yes, great examples. People do just want to be told what to do. Like, how how can I be successful? Yeah, some some people want that. Other people want to explore and fail and fall on <laughs> their face many times. That's yeah. fine. That's fine too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is good. Like, how do I start? Um, I know that experience it matters, and so you can try to be prescriptive and and give some advice and and show people you know how to bring experience management to their organization. Uh, I really liked your point about capturing the data we already have about the experience. Mm. I can yeah. already like. When Inbox Zero came out, Inbox Zero was a thing like, oh my gosh, yeah. all my emails are deleted or all my emails are read or whatever your Inbox Zero is. Yeah, That is just such a great example of of one of those things. You could tell by someone's inbox how many unread emails that they had, how stressed they were, most likely, or mm-hmm. you know, how much productivity they're losing or something to that regard. You can see that there's millions of services and, and, and situations where you can use that data to your advantage. Yeah, exactly. Um, so back to happy signals. What does the data show about employee experience, the state of employee experiences yeah. today? Would you say that organizations are starting to see success and are starting to change, or are we still in the dark ages? Yeah, it's it's getting better all the time. And I, I think that the funny thing is that IT um, is doing a really good job. Uh-huh. And that's something that always like is IT is bad. I mean, that's like the common thing that people can complain when they go go after work. Like, yeah, you know, what can we complain? Well, we can complain about our IT, but actually, like, I think COVID time, for example, showed that as well. Suddenly, you have to make things work, and IT does. Uh-huh. Um, because I think the other thing is is the topic that is close to you is the enterprise service management side, and uh-huh. I think uh-huh. not other you know, departments maybe are not used to run services and measure them and actually, you know, make a good quality. But yeah, it's it's all the time going up. And also interesting thing that we realized is that that the, the happiness to the self-service portals, like the ServiceNow portal, that has now started to go up. 
It yes. was it was for a long time. It was the most hated channel, to be honest. Still, still, you just want, want, wanted to push it, and it was maybe a bit selfish to try to push it there. But now, I think we have found the things that that you need to do that to make it successful. So, so yeah. okay, excellent. That's good to hear. I, you know, I feel the same perception. It. I, unlike you, can't just peek behind the sheets and see how people's experiences are going. Like yeah. I can imagine you have a better pulse on on what's going on, like you said, with the different regions, like what the expectations are. So you probably know what's changing in those regions too. Yeah. What a great spot to be. And thank you so much for sharing those reports because that really is where a lot of your value, uh, a lot of the value in joining Happy Signals is. You're yeah. able to not only work on these initiatives, but you're able to compare yourself against other um, people in the market, other people that are trying to hire your employees. Um, yes. And so you'll know you know, what you need to work on, right? Yeah, and I, at, at least I felt when I was working with, with Tiaton to create these services that you're kind of, you're not really sure because you don't have this external benchmark like you have, you know, if you're doing Apple phones or Android phones, you just sense. look at the benchmarks, are we, are we there or aren't we? Yeah. But with internal services, you're kind of in the blind. So I think that has been the really the, the the reason why we wanted to create this and just give it to everybody and, and, and show so that you can start to understand that, okay, this is the area where we are maybe lacking. So Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, Pasi, where can people connect with you and learn more? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think maybe as listeners are probably used to listening podcasts so i would maybe recommend using uh, checking out our podcast the it experience podcast because it goes into depth so we have a lot of cool guests like like uh, hopefully you as well on on sunday uh talk about these topics in in depth and also uh there's always episodes about those reports the findings so if um. you're really interested in that i would i would recommend that as the as the easy way in so so, and those episodes always have then links to the report files and, and so on. So. Yes, I've seen the PDFs, I've downloaded them, I've ch- I've cherished them. Thank yeah. you for joining us on the Ticket Volume Podcast today, Posse. My pleasure, my pleasure. And for our audience, thank you for listening to this episode. We've got a bunch more out there and even more coming soon, so make sure you subscribe to receive an alert every time there's a new one. You can also submit a specific topic or guest by DMing me or complaining out loud on one of our ticket volume pages. Uh, LinkedIn is probably the easiest one. It's the one where we see the most. And speaking of that, if you did like today's podcast or want to share feedback, you can do that directly on the platforms. We'll probably see it because we're always paying attention. Besides, remember, the algorithms love those interactions. This podcast is brought to you by Invigate, the all-in-one IT service and asset management system that helps organizations with world-class IT support teams. If you're looking for a solution to build your help desk without the headaches of year-long implementations and high total cost of ownership, you are going to love Invigate. In fact, IT teams from NASA, Toyota, and McDonald's use Invigate to manage requests, automate workflows, and centralize inventory data so that they can focus on delivering better service. Because remember, good service is good business.